Hello. So I've got this idea to try to make a pick and place machine. And I have this valve, but uh, this valve is only a two way valve. Um, and for a pick and place machine, you really need a three way valve, or you can use multiple two way valves. So um, I figured out how to convert this guy from a two way to a three way. The, uh, the actual three ways aren't that expensive, but um, I have this, and I don't have a three-way. So, here's how I did it. Um, first you pull this clip out. And then uh, the uh, nylon center piece just pulls right out. And for the sake of expediency, I have already gutted this one. So, I'll show you what's inside normally in the order it's in. So, this guy has a little um, gasket there, and he is what actually creates the seal against there. Okay, it's held down by this spring, and uh, then there's a little fiber washer. And then this guy is press fit in there. Okay, so first step, get this guy out. So um, I had to grab it with the pliers and twist and pull and blah, blah, blah. And eventually it came out. So don't lose that little spring and don't lose, well, you can lose the fiber washer actually. Okay, so how do you make this into three-way? Normally this guy doesn't have a hole right there. Um, but um, if you take it out in the garage and drill a hole through, then, drill the hole through here, so you can get at it. This actually has um, flats on the side of it, so it'll allow the air to pass around the side of it. So all we've got to do is get ourselves another port, and then we've got a three-way. So, I drilled this out previously for the sake of expediency, and now I'm going to epoxy in this little piece of uh, stainless steel tubing. Otherwise, it was like a hypodermic from, um, I think it was an inkjet refill kit. But anyway, I had this little piece of tubing, so it fits in there nicely. I'm going to epoxy that in. Okay, so I've mixed up the epoxy, and I... Uh, have it in there and I haven't blocked the port, most importantly, so I just gotta wait for it to cure. Okay, that's good enough. So now here's how you put it back together. This guy goes in like that. And here's something we're changing. This O-ring, when it came, was actually on here as a, I think it was for a vibration isolation or something. So when the solenoid snaps back, it you know it doesn't hammer into the back end of here. So it's normally sitting here. I'm relocating it to in between these two parts to give me a seal on my third port. So there. So let's drop it in there. return spring and then since I've now taken up a little bit of this space here I'm going to press it all the way back I'm leaving the fiber washer out that's what was in between before so press this back in I probably should have done this before I you know glued that on so I could just press it on the surface but oh well so now I got to get this back in there all the way well, at least to the O-ring, you know, so the O-ring is sealing against here again. Okay, so this is about how far I had to put it in to get it to accutate properly. So now all we have to do is put it back together. So, hmm. 
put a little clip back in. And as one of my favorite YouTube channels like to say, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> so you can hear I got the aquarium pump going in the background now, so. That's a good sound. Okay, so I've got an aquarium pump here modified so that half of it produces vacuum. That's my vacuum and then half produces pressure. So I want to put the pressure on here. I'm going to put the vacuum on here. And now, Yes, okay. No, oh, I'm fine. And if all is working as planned, I'm not left handed. We get a little uh, burst of pressure when we uh, let off so that it releases the part. And I will prove it to you. So, and then I'm gonna do this really quickly so I don't fill the tube. That is that. This thing's about uh, three dollars and fifty cents on uh, surplus because they're from uh, coffee makers, I think. That's that.